this video, I'm going to show you how to make potassium tetraperoxochromate, a very unstable compound featuring chromium in the rare oxidation state of plus 5. Here I am heating some ready-made stuff with a propane torch. Warning. This experiment involves carcinogenic compounds, including carcinogenic smoke, strong oxidizers, and the potential of a premature ignition. Use appropriate safety precautions. To begin, take 2.5 grams of potassium chromate. You can also use potassium dichromate. Then, get 3 grams of potassium hydroxide and dissolve both in 15 milliliters of water. You may have noticed I'm using more potassium hydroxide than is stoichiometrically correct. This is because it is good to have an excess of potassium hydroxide and bad to have an excess of potassium chromate. Then, take 10 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide and chill both the potassium chromate potassium hydroxide solution and the hydrogen peroxide solutions separately in ice baths. You want to get them as cold as you can, but such that the solutions do not freeze. So about minus 15 degrees Celsius works best. Mine are a bit warmer than that, but that's okay. It'll just decrease yield a little bit. Once the solutions are chilled, add the 30% hydrogen peroxide solution very slowly to the potassium chromate potassium hydroxide solution. You'll notice a color change. What is happening is the hydrogen peroxide is reacting with the potassium chromate and hydrogen uh, and potassium hydroxide to form potassium tetraperoxochromate and water. Um, now, you may wonder why you need the, hydrogen, the potassium hydroxide. This is because you need to remove the hydrogen from the hydrogen peroxide, so you're left with pure peroxoligands to complex with the chromate. Now, uh, the hydroxide on the potassium hydroxide pr provides the perfect means for removing hydrogen from the hydrogen peroxide to leave you with pure peroxoligands, which can then complex. So, now you see that the solution is turning kind of a dark brown, which is uh, showing that potassium tetraperoxochromate is being formed. The bubbles you see are due to oxygen being formed. After a couple hours, you'll see dark brown crystals form at the bottom of the test tube. This is the potassium tetraperoxochromate. Remove the crystals from the test tube and put them somewhere uh, good. I chose filter paper, although I may not repeat that choice. Wash them with clean ethanol. I'm using 96% denatured alcohol. You'll see a milky white precipitate form. Decant off the white precipitate and repeat the wash until the solution, the ethanol, stays clear. Once it is clear, take the crystals, put them on a wash glass or something like that, and let the ethanol evaporate. Now you're done.